love with your uh, friends. Do you ever drink beer? Pop, Come please. on, son, be honest with me. Do you drink beer? Of course I drink beer, Pop. I'm 29 years old. If you're of a certain age and you lived in Detroit, you know about America's only fire-brewed beer. Pop, Pop, listen to me. I drink Stroh's. Honest. Son, your mother and I, we only want what's best for you. Hey, Caesar, what's with this fire brewing business? I don't know, man. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, Sam. Huh? Fire brew, what is it? Hey, Nick! You drink Stroh's? Fire brewing! What is it? What? I'm not doing this because Stroh's is America's only fire brewed beer. What do I know from fire brewing? Their beer was not made in electric kettles. It would had a it had a flame underneath it, man, <laughs> and uh, that made it special. And I'm not doing it because according to Stroh's, fire the brewing mellowed the beer, made it years. smoother. I'm doing it because I love the taste. And besides, I'm getting a lot of bread to admit it. It dates all the way back to 1909 when Julia Stroh was touring breweries in Germany. So we tasted and tested and compared. The styles of beer that he liked particularly um, turned out to be fire brewed. They were brewed in kettles heated with a direct flame. The Stroh family had already been making beer in Detroit for half a century when the fire brewing process started. So my great-great-grandfather arrived here with uh, $200 in 1849. Well, that was, that was enough to get started. Bernard Stroh came with a wave of Germans to the Midwest, political refugees of the German Revolution of 1848. Bernard started the business in 1850, just east of downtown Detroit, off Gratiot Avenue. By the 1860s, he built a great big new brewery, and he was the largest brewer in Michigan by then. When Prohibition hit Michigan in 1917, Stroh's actually survived by making other things. Uh, we made soda pop, ginger ale. We had our own line of orange soda, cola, and all sorts of things. And then ice cream. Stroh's made a malt extract, supposedly for cooking and as a nutritional supplement, but, <laughs> well, we all know it was really for people who wanted to make their own illegal brew in the basement. Few brewers actually survived Prohibition, the Depression, and then the war after that, but the post-war boom was really pretty good to those who did. Pfeiffer got very big, Goebel got very big, Altus got very big. By the late 1950s, the big brand in Detroit was Goebel. Uh, Joe Bell to some. That was the spoof on it. Pabst Blue Ribbon were PBRs and uh, <laughs> that was called Joe Bell. Joe Bell. Uh, I've heard of J.C. Penney, but uh, not uh, Joe Bell. It's football once again with Goble 22. How's this? Van Patrick was at the mic for Goble when the Detroit Lions won their last NFL championship back in 1957. Lions 28, Chicago 10. Back then, Van Patrick was also the voice of the Detroit Tigers. And one of his famous expressions, well, here's the pitch, it's a long one, oh, it's foul by a Goble beer case. When Stroh's became the official beer of the Tigers, Van Patrick was suddenly out, replaced by an announcer from Baltimore, some guy named Ernie Harwell. The great brewery strike of 1958 hurt the Detroit beer business so badly it really never recovered. Beer from St. Louis and Milwaukee suddenly moved right in. Pabst became the biggest selling brand in Michigan as a consequence of that strike. In order for us to grow, we had to expand outside Michigan. Goebel went bankrupt, acquired by Stroh's. Pfeiffer moved out of state while Stroh's hired New York ad man, Bill Bernbach. Bernbach had created the iconic Volkswagen Beetle campaign, Think Small. But in the late 60s, Stroh's was thinking big. Stroh's brings you this eight pack to remind you how fast our beer disappears. The advertising worked. Oh, Yank! What about some of that Stroh's beer what you've been talking about? Stroh's quickly became a national brand, buying other beers and breweries along the way. Pick it up, mate. We don't want the blokes to know we've been here. But the costs, they were just too high. The Stroh Brewery on Gratiot shut down in 1985. So here's a toast. 
the first era of Detroit-made beer had come to a close. From one beloved to another, strong. 